Hi, and welcome to Google Go Programming for Beginners. My name is Brett Romero, and I'll be your instructor throughout the course. To give you a little background on who I am, I've been programming my entire career, including front-end, back-end languages, desktop. Um, this is a lot of the .NET world, um, things like AngularJS, and a lot of JavaScript, jQuery, um, HTML, CSS, and also Java and Delphi and mobile development, including Swift. Now I'd like to give you a little idea of what's going to be included inside of the course. So why use Go is one of the first topics we're going to cover. We're going to look at where did Go come from? What is it being used for? What are some of the, the benefits of using Go? Then we'll move into the actual language. Here we're going to use Golang's editor, so golang.org. Uh, just to start off and get used to what you can do with it. And then we're going to progress into the language. And as we do that, we're going to switch to a desktop IDE, an integrated development environment. This is going to allow for more functionality, such as getting hints. When we type out our functions, we can get then the parameter names and different things like that, because the IDE will then be aware that we're using Go. So it's going to allow us to become more efficient in our development. Also, at some point, we'll take advantage of concurrency. So the desktop environment is important to do that because we're going to spin up multiple threads. And it's not really something you can do inside of the golang.org online editor. So as we progress in the beginning through the language, we'll get into basic things like constants and variable declarations. Uh, we'll look at how a Go program is set up, and then we'll move into functions and the different kinds of functions. We'll look at structs, which are really like a class inside of Go, because Go doesn't really have formal classes. So the structs are there to hold data, and then the functions allow you to manipulate the data, and you can pretty much marry the two together, and you get something resembling a class. We'll look at pointers as well which are used a lot inside of Go. We'll look at conditional flow and looping. And then towards the end of the course, we get into object-oriented and polymorphic programming via the use of interfaces. And we'll see how Go handles that. So without classes, how does Go really handle object-oriented programming? And we'll get also into concurrency in this uh, tail-end part of the course which is a big topic for Go. So Go is a modern programming language, and concurrency was built into it to take advantage of multiple cores. Um, something you don't see in the older languages such as C and maybe C++ takes a little bit more effort there to do it. So it being a modern language created just a few years ago, uh, concurrency is right at the forefront of Go. So that is an outline of the course, and now we can go ahead and jump in.